So I'm willing to bet for many of you, you have a camera that can shoot log of some kind, whether that be S log, C log, V log, F log, whatever, all the logs. You have a camera that can shoot in a log profile. So you think, hey, I ought to shoot everything in log only to get back into your editing software to realize, wow, log footage is really hard to grade. And if you're anything like me, then that is a picture perfect story of your relationship grading log footage. At least it was like that for me uh, for quite a long time. Uh, but recently I have developed somewhat of a workflow for editing log footage. And that's exactly what I wanna share with you today in this video. Today I'm gonna be working with S-Log2 footage shot on my Sony a7 III. Uh, this is an 8-bit codec, which is historically awful for S-Log2 footage. But we're gonna hop into Premiere Pro and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to actually grade. Uh, I've got four clips selected here, each one shot in S-Log2 on the Sony a7 III. And I'm in the Lumetri color uh, window workspace here. I've got my vector scope pulled up on the left and then I've got my RGB waveform pulled up here on the right. Those are the two tools that I use uh, for editing any footage, uh, but especially S-Log2. So first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer, pull it over my footage and I like to make a copy of it because I like to have at least two adjustment layers when I'm uh, editing S-Log2. Sometimes I'll even put three on there depending uh, on the grade itself. So I'm gonna click the first one right above the footage and inside of your basic correction panel, you wanna go to the input LUT. Now, the reason you wanna come here is because the reality with log footage is that it is not Rec. 709, it is shot in log. And the first thing that you wanna do is that you wanna convert that footage to Rec. 709. Now there are other people on YouTube who can explain it a heck of a lot better than I can, uh, the difference between log and Rec. 709 and all the color spaces for that matter. But the important thing to know is that when you are watching a video on YouTube or you're delivering a video to a client or anything that you're seeing on TV, movies, whatever, uh, for the most part, like 90% of that is gonna be in Rec. 709. Therefore, you need to convert your S-Log footage to Rec. 709. And the best way to do that is with a LUT. Now, I've made my own custom S-Log2 to Rec. 709 LUT, uh, but really that was just a variation of Alistair Chapman's uh, S-Log2 to, to Rec. 709 LUTs that you can download for free uh, by just doing a simple Google search. So after I've converted it, we can already tell a massive difference toggling it on and off. You can see when it's toggled off, we have all this information kind of piled up in the middle uh, after turning it on. Now we've kind of stretched that footage out, added some contrast and some color back into it. So after that, this first layer is done. Now I'm gonna move on to the second adjustment layer. And this is really where I'm gonna start actually color correcting it and adding a bit of a grade to the footage. And what I can see is that I still have quite a bit of room to pull down those shadows uh, up until the point where our blacks would hit zero. I don't ever like to have my blacks hit zero. So I'm gonna just kind of keep my eye on the graph as I pull down my shadows. Right about there looks good. And one, one thing I like to do is actually go to my color wheels and pull down the shadows, midtones, and adjust the highlights from here as well. Right about there looks good. And you can see we actually have some information clipping uh, in other words, our highlights are going above the 100 mark right here, which is clipping. And obviously that's coming from the little flame right here, which is almost like pure white or even beyond that. So we can kind of pull our highlights down just a bit till it's just below 100. Kind of toggle that on and off and we can kind of see what this whole adjustment layer has looked like so far. You know, starting to look a lot better, adding that contrast back in. Uh, and obviously after shooting in log, a lot of our actual saturation and color information uh, was basically, you know, pulled all the way down in that flat picture profile. So I always like to add some saturation, maybe about 120. And then staying in the color wheels and match, 
Uh, this is my favorite tool to use in Premiere Pro and Lumi uh, Lumetri Color uh, because I feel like I can really start adding a unique grade uh, to the footage. So what I almost always do is I pull my, my mid-tones to kind of that orangish, that orangish red color, uh, never going too far, just small, subtle adjustments. And then usually uh, with my shadows, I personally just really enjoy having this kind of almost like filmic greenish yellow look to it. So that's where I kind of put my shadows more often than not. Again, it's just kind of fine tuning, tweaking back and forth. And then with my highlights, uh, usually I will pull these down to kind of the bluish teal area. Uh, but this all depends on the subject. You know, if I'm filming a person, which I will show you later, uh, that could change very, very easily. All right, moving on to the last clip here is just a shot of me uh, that I literally shot earlier this morning. So duplicate it just like I've been doing here. And uh, I think this is a great example of to show you how you can edit uh, S-Log2 footage when your subject is a person. So much like I've been doing this entire time, I think you guys are starting to see a pattern here, right? Bring the shadows down, bring the mid-tones down. Highlights, we're basically clipping at that point, so we'll just keep it right there. Starting to look better. I will actually use a curve here, the tone curve. Kind of see what looks good. Yeah, um, our color grade is gonna make a huge difference here. So what I usually do with people, bring those mid-tones, which are usually gonna affect the skin tones more than anything else. Highlights, absolutely bringing these to the cooler side of things. Cause once again, you know, I've got some window light here, uh, which is the ambient light, light of the scene, which is certainly uh, on the cooler side of things. And then shadows, just gonna kind of play around here. Actually think right about there, it looks fine. Bring that saturation up to like 110. And uh, whenever you're doing, whenever you're uh, shooting people and editing skin tones, man, this is like literally the hardest thing ever to do. You really wanna make sure you get these right. I've actually gotten an entire video on how to edit skin tones in Adobe Premiere Pro, but uh, I'm going to be coming out with another video very shortly on kind of some advanced techniques on editing skin tones. But uh, until that point, I'm not gonna quite uh, do that yet, but uh, one thing I'll do, I'm gonna kind of scale up. Whoops, click this. We're gonna scale up. Oh, yeah, baby, this is what you guys came to see right here. <laughs> and we're gonna get into back to the scopes and just kind of see, okay, uh, some of our this is our skin tone line, and some of it is kind of veering off to the reds. So I'm gonna get into my curves or uh, yep, our curves here, get to the hue versus hue. Grab that. And we're gonna start dragging just down just like so subtly here. Even that is too far. You can see how they're turning like more green. We don't want that and up there to magenta. Just subtle right about there, okay? You might not even notice a difference, but I do. <laughs> I'm gonna click on the saturation. Oh, it doesn't even recognize me. Dang it, saturate. That's weird. All right, Premiere Pro is uh, bugging out and that's fine. That is, that is uh, not a big deal, because I know where it's at. On the saturation, we're just gonna bring it down. Uh, we'll play around with it. Just gonna pull out just a bit here. On the saturation. You know, that <laughs> uh, is not natural. That's not how my skin tones normally look. 
but right about there, that's not doing too bad. Let's kind of see what this entire adjustment layer looks like. It's starting to look pretty good. And as I said earlier, you know, I want to keep that natural kind of faded look to the scene. I don't want to take that away. But one thing I'm noticing here is in my sweatshirt, I am seeing some greens start to kind of pop in there. And I don't know why the selection tool is not working, but my guess is it's right about here. Okay, that's not too bad. And uh, man, I mean, there is probably a little bit more I could do, but in my opinion, that is, uh, that's looking pretty decent. Let's kind of just see the white balance, if that's looking all right. Even the white balance appears to be fine. And uh, right there, I think that, that footage looks pretty good. There's of course always more that you can add or take away to any color grading tutorial, uh, but the reality is so much of color grading is personal preference. Uh, there's not necessarily gonna be a right or a wrong way to do it. But one thing I would so like incredibly uh, suggest to you is make sure you get a conversion LUT. Now I have my own again that I made that I kind of tweaked and customized to fit my preference, but I will leave a link in the description to one of the best ones that I think are out there for free. So uh, make sure you check that out, pick that one up and then start um, tweaking it if you need to. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys in today's video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope uh, you were able to learn something from it. And uh, I guess until next time, you guys have just a freaking great day and uh, see you guys in the next video.